Good evening, devloggers. Um, I finally broken down and decided I want to put Time Barbarian onto a mobile device. So you may know I've got a new mobile games class coming up this fall and I'm trying to get ready for that. Uh, one of the things I want to investigate is how easy is it to put ad support into um, a Unity game on mobile? Uh, is that something that students are going to be able to do at you know, no cost, or are they going to have to upgrade their accounts to pull that off? So I'm going to check that out, and I need some game to, to put on, you know, uh, the Android store and the Apple store that I can use to hook that up and, and see how successful I can be with that. Uh, <clears throat> and so what have I got so far? I've already started on it. I've spent uh, two evenings, uh, probably about a total of four hours so far. I have this virtual thumbstick that actually I just I found that in the in the Unity Asset Store. I will provide that, and I'm gonna uh, definitely use this one in class next fall. It's it's free and it's very capable, very very good. I'm I've chosen the this one that lets you freely move the joystick around, and I think I'm gonna turn the graphics off for the actual mobile build. Um, just so you just move your thumb anywhere over here on the left hand side and you'll steer the character with that um, and then I hooked up a fire button so far that doesn't work the way I, I need it to do for a mobile game so I will be redoing that other than that I've been working on the parallax for the background and the repeat tiling but not quite done with that I can see right here the tile for this section of background is not repeating correctly. So I'm going to first work on that. I think that's what I'm going to work on this evening. Um, and I'm just going to try to leave the recording going and then maybe splice together some highlights as we go. My plan tonight. First up, I'm going to try and fix this background bug, uh, get that working correctly. And then I'm going to hopefully get that done quickly and then upgrade the inputs to be uh, more friendly for both a mouse and keyboard mode as well as a mobile mode. Um, and so let's get to it. I'm going to start right in with the background. The first thing I noticed was this lava section. If I move back and forth just like that, I lost that lava section and it did not come back. Um, I wonder if maybe it's easier to reproduce with this larger background section. Oh, in fact, look at this. Uh, I can see that you know, the lava has not come back. It's coming in late. I wonder if that's related. Okay, so let's take a look at the background. Here's the lava. Um, and what I do is I just put in one piece of the lava and then I just want to tile it. And so I've got a script on there, repeat background, that's just going to take that object, calculate those boundaries, and then just bang, tile it. Uh, and right off the bat, when we start up, it looks like it worked. Looks like it worked well. Uh, right? Game mode, it fills the screen. Here in scene mode, we can see it's all laid out, and it's laid out left to right. That looks good. All right. And when I go a little bit to the left, it should have moved one of those clones to there. All right, and then if I go back to the right, okay, it's not malfunctioning now, naturally, because I'm looking at it. Maybe let's look at the, uh, the larger ground. This larger ground currently has only the one object. 
If I go this way, no, oh, there's the gap. There we go. It should have activated this second object and placed it there. So let's hide everything else. Let's lose that. Let's lose the moon. Uh, now the only repeating background segment should be this ground object right here. And let's debug it. True to form, I hit the hotkey again and I interrupted the recording once more. I have remapped the hotkeys. That's actually the reason we don't have recordings from the first two sessions that I worked on this project. I was going to film the entire thing and make the whole thing into a series of videos. My recording software that I'm using uses the same hotkey to stop the recording as I use to do debugging. Uh, and so I kept messing up my recordings. All right. Uh, I have remapped my hotkey. Let's take another look. Let me catch you up on the debugging you've already missed. Um, okay, where are we at right now is my tiling ground. I've hidden the moon in the lava for now, so I can just focus on this ground object. You can see it's blinking on and off. And if I select it, you can see it's just it's flying away down the negative axis. Um, okay, so that's what's going wrong. What we're trying to do is uses a recycling pool method to bring back, you know, to to just when something goes off screen, we'll put it, we'll recycle it, and then when it comes back on screen, we'll just pull it out of the recycle bin and throw it right up on the screen, so we don't have to instantiate very often. Um, okay, so here's the code where that's happening right now, and what's happening is I've pulled it out of the recycle bin. And then I'm trying to place it in the correct position. But I don't know where the correct position actually is. I have first child that I assumed would be the first transform in the list, which sure enough is the recycled object. And so the recycled object is being pulled out and treated as it's the head. And it should not be the head. The head is the first live object. So what I'm going to do is fix that. I'm going to say first child is null, last child is null. And as I'm going through here, I'm going to say if null equals first child, first child equals child and last child equals child boom I just want the last the last thing that's active is going to be the last child the first thing is active it's going to be first child uh, boom boom that should hopefully fix that let's take a look see how we did all right Going to the right. Okay, going to the left. It's brought back. The blinking is gone. Seems to be working. Looks like I've possibly fixed it. Let's crank the speed up. And just zoom for a while and watch the world just tile and repeat. Okay. That seems fixed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and commit that change right away. All right. With that done, that brings me to my second goal for tonight. Um, the second goal was I want to improve the input system. The input system. What am I going to do? Uh, first of all, this virtual thumbstick I think is going to be just fine for mobile, although I think I want to turn the graphics off. Um, but it's not very, not very convenient for debugging in the editor on the PC. So I want 
some, you know, uh, just regular old keyboard inputs. Uh, WASD, should I use WASD? I should use arrow keys. I feel like I used arrow keys uh, when I was debugging, when I was building this game the first time. So I'm gonna use arrow keys. And then for this one, I want to repeat fire while holding that down. So we'll do that. Okay, let's start with it. Um, let's look at this dynamic joystick. No, I don't want to. I don't want to put it in the dynamic joystick. I want to put it in the player. Uh, where's the player script? Okay, so right here is the input section. In fact, I'm going to label it. And put this up there too. This is an input. Okay, what else am I going to do? I'm going to say um, if input dot get key key code dot Yeah. I'm going to add them together. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm going to say move dot y minus equals 1.0. I think up is negative. I want this. No, wait. Up is positive. Up is positive in this system. Down arrow. Negative y, uh, right arrow, that's x, and left arrow, x, negative, and notice this is not part of input. Face the right direction. Update velocity. Okay, good enough. All right. Um, how about this fire laser? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say M fire laser or equals uh, input dot get key key code dot space. Okay, so if you fire, if you hit the space bar, you're gonna fire, um, and the arrow keys are gonna imitate the joystick. Let's check it out. First of all, old system still works. New system, arrow keys, space bar. Oh, look at that. Got that wrong. Space bar. I must have put that on the wrong variable. M fire laser. I thought that was what happens when you do, that's the holding it down, isn't it? Because that's what this. Yeah. If fire laser, we hit the trigger. If M fire laser, we hold the trigger. Could be that my whole trigger code isn't right. Well, let's just throw a breakpoint right there and let's find out. Um, You know what? Instead of breakpoints, like breakpoints can be pretty tedious for something like this. I'm going to just log it. Debug log uh, M fire laser equals. Fire laser equals.
Okay, M fire laser is true and fire laser is false. So actually that works. It just seems like my uh, my firing code is wrong. So it's not the input that was wrong at all. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not talking crazy. Yeah, fire laser is true. Our M fire laser is true. Fire laser, which is the like momentary just right now, is false. So that must mean this hold trigger function. It says trigger hold is true. I must not have my timer set up right. M fire timer. Uh huh. What is fire delay? Oh, I didn't put a default value. I bet I didn't set my weapon up to have a fire delay. Oh, I did. 0.25 seconds. 0.25 seconds. That should work. In fact, let's go ahead and put that in as a default. I mean, that's not that's not my problem, but. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go in here. Trigger hold and fire. Oh, what's this? Fire is not, did not return true. Okay, why not? Oh, it just says. It just returns false for some reason. Uh, what does bullet fire do? Okay, let's take a look here. Bullet fire doesn't, yeah, that's a void at this point for some reason. Um, I changed that, I don't, I don't know why. I'm gonna take, make it back to a bool and say return true. Uh, I ported some of this code. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do. Yeah, that's fine. I could, you know, refactor this later, but I'm thinking that might be the issue. There we go. Pew, 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 pew. Um, is that a quarter second though? Oh, it's got a fire delay of one. Who put that on there? Did I do that? No. Why did the fire delay change to one? Who did that? Uh, and fire delay, let's go take a look. Oh, what's that doing there? That was, um, again, the default code, default code from, uh, or uh, copy code from when I ported it from my previous project. Okay, there we go. That's the correct fire rate. All right, um, that should be those two things. I wonder if I can just turn off the graphics of my virtual joystick. So I don't think I need that. And it still works. I don't know if like players want to see that. I'm going to say they probably don't. Okay, next up, the fire button. No, you know what? I want to make a folder. Let's do folder UI. So I think I might need more than one UI button. Create C sharp script. Um, I'm just gonna make it. Uh, just make the fire button, and then I'll generalize it later. I like to rather than trying to plan out all my systems, I like to just make the code, just write the game, and then once you once you know what you need and what you've got, you can generalize as you go. When you need it the second time, then you generalize. Don't need to generalize up front. So a fire button is going to be, uh, it's going to need an eye pointer down. 
point. This is event system. Hold on here. I need using Unity Engine dot event systems. I pointer. There we go. Pointer down handler and I pointer up handler exit handler. Let's call it exit handler. I think we don't need any of that. That's on pointer down, not I pointer down. Okay, that should fix it. Yeah. Well, what's a semicolon doing there? Come on, unread. Okay, there we go. That's the format. Okay, and we're not gonna throw. We're gonna say when the pointer is down, um, what do we, how do we want this to work? Uh, am I gonna pull on the button? We could do that. Um, pull M is down. Pulls. False. I'm gonna say public get button is button down. Is button down. Is button hold. Call that. And we'll just return return m is down. Okay. Um and so M is down is true. And I need to just bing. Wait, that isn't what I want. Yeah, do I maybe not need that? But I didn't think I did. Okay. Let's see. Nope. False. Okay. Let's just do some debug logging on pointer down. On pointer exit. Let's see if exit and down are the two that I need. And put that on the fire button. Let's put the fire button on my fire button. Go. Okay. Exit is only if you drag out. Okay, so I think I do need the pointer up. I pointer up handler. Oh, uh, <laughs> handler. There we go. Implement. Oh, we could do public. Okay, maybe that's better. That's what it wants me to do, so I'm going to do it that form. Okay. Pointer down, pointer up, pointer down, exit. Up. Pointer down, exit. Uh, all right, so if you put your finger on the fire button, you drag your finger off the fire button, are you still holding the fire button until you let up? Maybe. You know, we could do that. We could do that. Um, in which case, I don't need the exit anymore. This seems like it's probably probably good. Okay, we'll do that. Um, we don't need these logs. 
And what we can do then is, that turned out to be super generic if I'm gonna keep it like that. Player needs a public fire button and fire button. And I'm gonna change this. Uh, M fire laser equals M fire button dot get no dot is button hold. Do that, and we can lose this now. Yeah, we don't need to feed it. We can pull it. I'm gonna pull it. Okay, that's that. That's that. And now this is a super generic button, but I'm gonna keep its name. Should I keep the name? No. I'm gonna call it a simple button. Uh, there we go. There's a simple button, fire button. This thing has a simple button on it. Cool. Uh, player. Think. Save. Go. So now, if I click it, my, my thumb, and I let my thumb wander around, I'm still holding the fire button until I let go. All right, I think I like that. Spacebar works, arrow keys work. All right, great. By the way, yeah, this is a mobile game, but why do I need the cursor keys and the arrow keys to work? Because a lot of my time is not on a mobile device. A lot of my time will be spent right here in the editor. and I want that to be easy and convenient. Uh, so that's just good practice. Also, it's going to make it very easy to port this thing if I want to take this version of the game to another platform. Okay, so uh, that's good progress for today. Um, I think I'll call that one. Uh, I'm going to cut that one off right there, and we'll circle back. What's next? There's a lot left to do. Um, I think the next obvious thing is to constrain the player vertically. So the player can't go too low or too high. Uh, and to terminate those laser bullets when they go off screen. I think it seems like a pretty obvious next thing to do. So that's what that's my plan for the next video, and I'll see you then.